cost of living in Ecuador is always a complicated subject. So that's why today I'm going to focus on a specific part of cost of living, which is shopping for groceries. In other words, how much do groceries cost in Ecuador? And what better way to get that answer than to see how much I spend on groceries in Supermaxi, one of Ecuador's largest and most popular supermarkets. And don't worry, I'll be looking at more than just food. But a big disclaimer before we begin, this video will have an analysis at the end. But you have to pay close attention to what is being bought. If you don't, you won't understand the final cost at the end of the video and you won't know what things you need to add or remove that are going to be different from our shopping lists. Now, I did want to show you the whole shopping experience, but Supermaxi has some rules in place that made that a bit complicated even after trying to get in touch with them. But of course, I do have the groceries, and there's more on the floor. I also have, as you can see here, receipts, and we also took pictures of everything that we bought while we were buying it at Supermaxi. Now, we're gonna split this up into sections, and we're gonna start off with personal stuff, or as you might know it, toiletries. Basically, all the things that you use on a daily basis, shampoo, soap, toothpaste, toothbrush, stuff like that. And of course, we're gonna look at how much it cost me, and we're also going to look at the highest and lowest prices that I found for the items that I bought. The first item on our list is toothbrushes. And I bought this four pack of toothbrushes that came out to $4.72. And the lowest price when it came to toothbrushes was 91 cents, with the highest being at $9.14, and the prices vary depending on if you bought an individual toothbrush or if you decided to buy a pack of toothbrushes. And there was also some variance depending on the brand. Then of course we have the toothpaste to accompany the toothbrushes. And I bought another three pack because, well, most of the things that I buy are in large quantities in order for them to last a long time. Now, the toothpaste came out at $4.53 for this three pack. But of course, there were other options that started from as low as 89 cents to as high as $7.07, .07, with some of the lowest options being kids packs and some of the highest options being name brand or bigger packs of toothpaste. Up next, we have floss. And really, nothing special here, Johnson & Johnson floss. And this cost $4.19. And the lowest price of Floss was at $3.14, with the highest being $14.67. But of course, the highest priced floss was also floss that was in this round container that looked like it could go on forever. The next item is mouthwash. And let me move this here. And this mouthwash cost $8.70. And the lowest price I found for mouthwash was at 73 cents with the highest being at $9.59. And the variance in price was due to size as well as the brand because the very cheap mouthwash was very small while the more expensive one had, well, it also had better features, better things, and, you know, it was bigger. Next is the Q-tips and very cheap item. It only cost 97 cents. But there was also a cheaper option at 55 cents with the most expensive option being at $3.86. And at that point, Ecuadorians might say, does it come with music? Now we have deodorant. And deodorant, I bought this two pack, sorry about that. And this two pack of deodorant cost me $10.41. There were of course individual cheaper brands of deodorant that cost $1.17 and there were some that went up from $8. So it really depended on the brand and of course, if they came in a dual pack. The following item is another dual pack and we have deodorant spray. And this deodorant spray dual pack cost me $7.76. There were of course some individual deodorant sprays at $3.34 and some more expensive dual packs at around $10. Now we have lotion, and this lotion is the one that I got. It is Basa brand, and it cost $5.11. There were, of course, cheaper lotions at $3.26, 
and some more expensive lotions that went from $10 and above. The following item is the most expensive item in this section, but it's also one that lasts me the longest time and it is very important. And this is a special kind of face wash, brand La Roche, and it cost $32.29. This is the only item I didn't get in Super Maxi because they didn't have it and I had to go to Fibeca to get it. And Fibeca actually let me record, so I showed this section of the face washes and stuff that they had in Fibeca, and some of them went from as low as around $20, 25 and going as high as $40 and above. But it makes sense because skincare is no joke, so I don't mind spending a little bit more on something that's gonna take care of my face. Next, we have foot spray, and the one that I got here cost me $3.70, and there were some that went from as low as $2.70 to as high as around $5 and above. And of course, if you wanted to buy talcum powder, it also had variants in that price range. Now we have another big hitter in what is shampoo, mainly because I always get bigger shampoo in order for it to last longer, like I said earlier. And this one cost me $13.25. But there were options that went from as low as $3.48 and went to as high as $13 and above. Like I said, depending on the size and in some cases, even the brand. Then we have our good friend, Soap takes care of our whole body. And this cost me $2.83. And you could also buy some individual bars of soap at around 36 cents with the highest packs of soap that I could find being $4.14. And that really varied depending on the brand. Like the ones that I saw were Dove, but this is Palmolive, so you know, brand difference. Now, the following item on my list is actually sunscreen. And this time I didn't buy it because it cost $20 in Super Maxi to buy sunscreen, but I've already talked about this before. Sunscreen is very expensive, but it is very important. The prices vary in sunscreen from $20 and above. So at lowest, you could find it at around 20, and if it's on discount, maybe 15. And then at the highest price range, you could find it $20 and above. And the final item we have for this personal stuff section is actually this pain cream. And this cost $7.75. And there were some that cost from as low as $3.02. And, and well, this was actually the highest one, which was $7.75. But there was one that was slightly in the middle that's really well known, that is Voltaren. But it was a 30 gram container that cost $6.00. And this one has 140 grams and it's cost $7. So it made much more sense for me to get this, especially considering I recently went through an injury, as many may know. So my total for these personal things, toiletries, whatever you'd like to call them, is $106.21. And if you add the lowest values that I found while I was shopping, you would get $43.55. While if you add the highest values, you would get $142.22. Now let's move on to the next section, but before we do... Okay, that's better. Now this is general house stuff. So basically things that you need in general for the house. Now let's begin our trip down big item lane since a lot of these things seem to be pretty big. And we're gonna start off with detergent. This bag of detergent cost me $4.01. But of course, there were cheaper ones, which were at $2.90, with some of the more expensive ones being $25 plus, depending on whether they were liquid or if they were a powder-like solution. And there was even this giant bag that was like $50. So, you know. Our second item that makes everything a brighter place, I guess, is Clorox. And this Clorox cost me a dollar and 18 cents. And there were some that were more expensive at four dollars and 56 cents, but really this was the cheapest option I could find. Next, a very cheap item, and this is called white soap, which is also used to clean clothing, and this cost 71 cents because it's an individual pack. And the cheapest, the 71 cents one, could also be 
as expensive as $2.76 if you decided to get a pack of white soap. Now, because dishes also need cleanliness, of course we have dishwash soap. And I got this one here, brand 901, doesn't mean it cost 901. And this cost $1.98. And there were some cheaper ones at 88 cents, while the most expensive one I saw was at $11.16, probably due to the size or even the brand, because I've never seen this brand before. Then we have good old fashioned TP, toilet paper. And I got this one, which was a four pack with gigantic rolls, meaning there are 50 meters per roll. And this cost $3.30. And there were some that were cheaper at $1.36 because they weren't giga rolls. And there were some that were more expensive at $13.74 because they were big packs, like 12 toilet papers, which I didn't feel like I needed right now. Our next item is napkins. And in some ways, I thought that maybe you could avoid this if you use just a cloth always and kept washing the cloth. But I'm pretty sure most people use napkins. And napkins cost this pack $1.74. And there were some that were cheap at 30 cents, but of course, that was individual packs of napkins. And there were some as high as $3.17 because they had much more napkins to offer. Dog lovers and dog owners, this next one is for you. We have dog food because of course I also have a dog and he's outside, cute little husky named Chief. And this bag of dog food cost me $4.65. I normally get bigger bags of dog food, but since the one that I was looking for wasn't in this brand, there were bigger ones, but in different brands, I didn't buy one this time. Now, if you were looking at a cheaper option, there were these tiny bags that I don't even know if you can call them food because it felt like a liquid at $1.23 with the biggest bag that I could find being $59.44. Next on our list is what I called mopping solution because I wasn't sure what else to call it. But I have this here and this cost me $3.30. It's pretty hefty. So, you know, you're getting a lot of good value from this. And of course, there were cheaper options, smaller, at 90 cents and more expensive options at $9.03. But what good is mopping solution without a mop? So, hidden here, we have an actual freaking mop. <laughs> uh, and this cost $3.95. And there were the options to buy just the part of the mop over here, like a rag, at $1.79 for a pack of rags. And you could, of course, go and buy a more fancy mop that I saw, which was at $21.33. So lowest would be those rags. The highest would be that high-end mop. And then last on this section, very small item, we have sponges. And I bought this three pack at $2.61. But you could have bought an individual one that looked kind of weird at 25 cents and other packs at $2.85. So the price difference isn't much. It just really depended if you wanted an individual one or if you wanted a pack. And since I want this to last for a month, I went for the pack. As for my totals for all of these things, this cost me $27.43. If you were looking to buy the cheapest option for all of these things in this section, then that would cost you $11.50, while the highest price that you could find for all of these things would cost you $153.04. Which, wow, the difference between the lowest value and even my value for this section and the highest value is just crazy. Okay, but now we gotta do the final section, so this has gotta go. Okay, much better. And now we're at the food section, and this, this is a very special section because a lot of factors come into play here. The main factor is the difference between the things that you buy once and then you don't have to worry about it until a month or more later, such as oil, for example, or condiments. And then the things that you might have to buy either on a daily or a weekly basis. Think of things such as vegetables or even just bread. In order to have less issues with this factor, I've decided that for this section, 
there will be six totals. There will be the usual three totals, which is my total, the highest total, and the lowest total. But there will also be the total where the items that need to be bought constantly will be multiplied by four. And the reason why we're multiplying it by four is because in general, there are four weeks in each month. With that factor or issue resolved, really the only other thing I'd worry about is the fact that some people don't buy the same things as I do. And there's also the fact that some people probably don't even buy food at all because they just go out and eat all the time. In which case, this can all serve a purpose to that person to see how much they're saving or to see how much maybe they're overspending when they go out to eat. But I digress. The first item on our list is, of course, oil. And we got this big container of oil. And this cost $3.65. I did write down that it's important to note that this oil was on discount because if it hadn't been on discount, it would have cost $5. But of course, there were cheaper options for oil, coming in as low as 45 cents for this little bag of oil, which felt kind of weird. The bag itself, because it was kind of slippery. And then there was the highest, which was $9.72. But of course, this was a giant container of oil. So, you know, depends on what you need and how long you want it to last for. Up next for foods, something that I use more than oil, actually use this instead of oil, is butter. Whenever I cook my foods, I don't use oil in the frying pan, I use butter. And this butter, at least this container, cost me $2.69. There was of course a smaller container of butter at $1.36 and a giant container which was at $10.69. Next, we have one of my main condiments for my foods and this is the garlic powder. As you can see here, I always get this one unless, well, I typically try to find a bigger one. Actually, I have an example over here. This is what I typically try to find, granulated, but I couldn't find it. So I got this one instead, and this actually cost me $5.60. There was, of course, a smaller container at $1.16, but I got this bigger one, which was the most priced one at the moment at $5.60. If there would have been one like this, it would have probably been more expensive, coming in at around eight to $10. Then we have my other preferred condiment, which is of course, onion powder, if it'll let itself be found. There we go, onion powder. This one I got nature's heart this time because I couldn't find it in this container. But same thing as this one, I usually get it in a much bigger container like this. But nowadays there's a kind of problem because of the heat. If it's not in a well-cooled area, it becomes all rock solid like you can see here. And of course it's gonna be more expensive. This one came in at $1.80, but it could go up as high as over $8 if you get it in a container as big as this. Now we have probably the thing that I use the most for most of the things that I do. And this is of course pink salt, Himalayan salt. And this bag, this bag that has 600 grams, cost me $3.35. There were of course smaller containers at $1.09, and there was this block, literally a block of pink salt that cost $34.95. I don't know who buys blocks of salt, but hey, all the power to you, do what you want. I use pink salt for almost everything, my food, my lemon water. As most people know, if you watched my streams, for me, pink salt is very important. So hey, maybe that block of salt is amazing. Let me know if you've tried it before in the comments, so maybe one day I'll give it a shot. Although at $34, I don't think so. And following the pink salt, we have the newest salt addition to my diet, which is sea salt. And this one, it's different from the one I normally get, very similar, but it cost $1.67. And the reason it's different is because at least from what I can see, the salt crystals are very big on this one, while the ones that I have and the one that I normally get are a lot 
thinner. Now for this next one, it's actually something I haven't bought in quite some time, but I decided to buy it because it would be, it makes sense for this video. And it's this sweetener. This is monk fruit sweetener. And this is supposed to replace what people would normally buy, which is sugar. But price wise, it's definitely gonna be a big difference. This bag of monk fruit sweetener cost me $9.86. And there were, of course, cheaper options, one at $3.51 and another that was a little bit more expensive at $10.32. And the difference really, I felt, was the size because the, the cheap one was really small and I don't know how long that was going to last, while the bigger one was something like a box or something like this that you know will last more time, especially considering this has 200 grams. The thing about this is it's something important to mention because People normally get sugar. I don't eat sugar, at least not add it into my food or into my drinks. But since I needed to add something to be the replacement for sugar, I decided to go back to monk fruit sweetener. And I think it's gonna be something, at least for now, useful for my parents because I'm gonna let them use it so that they can take care of their health as well. The next few items on our list are a little bit special too because they're the vegetables. And the way that you get the variants for these depends on how many of them that you buy because they charge you depending on the weight. So the first thing that we have in this kind of vegetable section is actually lemons or lime. And this net, at least these nets actually do have a, a specific price, was $2.89. Then next on our vegetable list, we have carrots. And there are two here, which I'll just take out one. And these two carrots cost 39 cents, both of them together. So we're gonna leave this here. Our next vegetable is of course the tomato and we only have one even though I bought three because these have already been used to make some special food that I'll talk about later on. And this tomato, these tomatoes, cost 69 cents for all three of them. Following the tomato, we now have the onions and in terms of onions, I can't take it out because this one's already been cut up and peeled, but the onions we bought two and the onions cost 59 cents. Moving on from the vegetable section, now we're going into something that is a very important item for my diet, which is eggs. And at least this dozen eggs right here, which are extra big according to the packaging, cost $2.60. There was of course a dozen eggs that cost $2.13, but they weren't the extra big ones apparently and there were ones that cost $6.71, but they came with more eggs, which I didn't necessarily need at that moment because I wanted to buy to show an example for this video. Now, the following food is actually ground beef, but I'm sad to say that there's none left because this was already used to cook. And this ground meat, this ground beef, it cost $1.94 each pack, but of course there were different prices of packs for example, we saw one that was cheap at $1.90 and we saw a more expensive one, the most expensive one that we could see there, at $5.10. And of course, this is going to vary depending on the content of that container of ground beef. Up next is something that I eat at least once a week, which is tuna. And I got this container of tuna, brand Van Camps, and it cost me $2.86. But of course, there were more expensive cans of tuna, which were huge and cheaper ones, with the cheaper ones being $1.22. Of course, they were tiny. And then the bigger one, which was, like I said, huge, at $8.05. Now, like I said earlier, I'm not really someone who eats sugar, but I figure everyone gets a sugar treat from time to time. So I decided to get this crunch bar. And this crunch bar cost $1.77. Decently big for a crunch bar, I guess. And of course, there's cheaper chocolates you can get, smaller bars that cost a dollar and even under. And there was this big fancy box of like a Christmas related tin of chocolate, which was $17.69, which was the most expensive one that I could find there. Okay, so for this next one, now I can explain what happened to the food. We have chips because I know aside from sugar treats, a lot of people get chips. And personally, I got these nachos, these circular style nacho chips. And this bag, we got two of them, cost $2.49. And the reason why we bought nachos this time instead of something else 
When it comes to what we made, well, what my brother made, he actually made this like special chili nacho style meal. So we decided to get this in order to complement it. And that's why a lot of the ingredients are probably gonna be missing from the rest of this list. Not a lot of them, but some of them. But of course, if we wouldn't have decided to get these, there were plenty of other options. Some very cheap options in the section of chips being 22 cents. And then there was the most expensive one, which was $4.98 for this bag of Friday's chips that I just thought was crazy expensive, to be honest. And it's probably because it was brand name imported to Ecuador, you know? Now we have a small but very staple component to my diet, and it is bread. Just literally one bread. And sometimes I'll eat more, sometimes it'll be roscas instead of bread, but this individual bread cost 57 cents. And of course, if you want more in terms of bread, there were also baguettes and other styles of bread that you could also buy at varying prices. And now for a drink, but not alcohol because I don't drink alcohol. So I always get, whenever there's a chance, I try to get this Wheatig, which is mineral water, and this cost 81 cents. It's a pretty nicely sized container. And of course, there were other styles of Wheatig, other mineral waters, and there was the most expensive one at $1.90, and this was actually the cheapest one. Unless, of course, you found the smaller bottles, but I wanted something that you would normally be able to drink, not just one day, but for at least maybe three. Now, I am a big fan of spicy, which makes it a good thing that I also drink a lot of water. So I did buy some hot sauce. In this case, I bought this chili sauce, Baria brand, and this cost me $5.30. There were, of course, other options, with the cheapest being at 52 cents, and one that went as high as $7.75 but I couldn't really identify or tell you why that one was so expensive because it didn't look like it should have cost what it did. Now we go into some of the things that we don't have because it's already been turned into food, into chili. And starting off, we have the frijoles, which cost $1.76, at least the one that I bought, because there was a cheaper option at 95 cents and a more expensive option at 3.99 cents. And I'm guessing the difference, like I said, is the size smaller container and the other one was a bit larger. Next up we have Chipotle and weirdly enough there was only one Chipotle container like not even another brand just one Chipotle container and that cost $3.91. Next we have something that did survive even though not complete. We have this tomato sauce right here which cost $1.50. And of course you could have found cheaper options which were smaller at 82 cents or the gigantic container of tomato sauce which cost $14.40. Next we have another survivor in the form of seasoning which is this 100% sazon and this cost $1.05. And there was some that was like at 43 cents but you know a lot smaller than this and there were some like the Example for the tomato sauce, giant container at $19. Then we have the final survivor, which probably won't last longer than today, which is this grated cheese mix. And this cost $3.99. And of course, this was the cheapest one, but there were slightly bigger bags at $10.15. And last but not least, we have something that I think a lot of people love, but it also went into the chili, which was bacon. And the bacon, the box of bacon that we bought, cost $3.63, which was actually the cheapest, with the most expensive costing at $3.99. And that was the food section. A round of applause for getting through that safe and sound. And we have the total, at least my total, for the food section, which was $71.79. Then, if we look at the lowest total, we have $39.18 and the highest total for the food section is $198.47. And something that I do want to clarify at least with the highest total so it doesn't sound completely preposterous because that is a crazy amount. Don't think of it as like, wow, this is crazy expensive. There are things that even though it is gonna be crazy expensive, you do need to calculate that they're just 
bigger items of things and you wouldn't normally get that. But anyways, the lowest total with the multiplied foods is actually $123.96. My total with the specific foods multiplied by four is $185.40. And then for the highest total with the multiplied foods, we have a total of $543.71. So now that we understand the costs for each individual section, let's get the absolute total after we get this out of the way. Better, much better. So starting off with the receipts totals, which is the realistic total that we have here, the receipt over here for Super Maxi says $173.74. Then if we look at the one for Fibeca, which remember we only bought one thing there, we have the total of $32.29. If you add both of these up, you get a total of $206.03. If you use my totals based on my calculations from each section, my total would be $205.43. So the receipt total and the total that we got over here are not too far off. Then if we take a look at the normal lowest total, we have a total of $94.23. And of course, at the higher end of the spectrum, we have a total of $493.73. And then if we look at the totals with the specific items multiplied by four, which remember, are a representation of doing grocery shopping for a month. If we look at my specific total, you get $319.04. If we look at the lowest total with the multiplied items by four, you get a total of $179.01. And then if you look at the absolute highest total, now this is the whole month and everything combined, this is $838.97. And I have to reiterate that that final absolute highest total could actually be a little bit less expensive, even if by only 50 or $100, if you take into consideration that there are items that even at their highest price, without having to multiply them by four or anything, they will last a very long time. So they're basically items you're not gonna have to buy repeatedly every month. And now with the cost analysis out of the way, there are four things I would like to leave you with. The first is that this video costs a lot to make, both in time and money. So I would really appreciate it if you got value from this, if you left a like, if you subscribed, and leave a comment letting me know how much you spend on groceries, no matter where you're at. And of course, if you'd like to go above and beyond, I would appreciate it if you became a channel member or a Buy Me A Coffee member to support me in making more videos like this. The second thing is the obvious fact that there are more places to buy than just Super Maxi. In Ecuador, in fact, you can buy a lot of the things that I found today in both Comisariato, which is a well-known supermarket in Ecuador as well, and obviously the market, which is the place where most people would say you get the cheapest things but there are certain factors that make it more convenient for me to buy in Super Maxi. So depending on your situation, you might wanna buy in these other places, but remember, there are certain things that are going to hinder that experience. But if you're really interested in an in-depth analysis for your specific situation in those places, like how much it would cost you to buy your shopping at the Mercado or maybe at a different supermarket that might be cheaper, then definitely you can send me an email at my business email so we can set up a consultation and we can see if I can do some boots on the ground work for you. The third thing that is vital to remember is that the prices of things are constantly going up and down depending on certain situations and some not even related to the actual country. For example, when oil prices went up, according to the supermarkets and the markets, it was because of the war in Ukraine. And many of us thought that that didn't even influence us, but it actually did. So definitely don't underestimate the possibility of things going up or down in price because it can actually happen. And the last thing is to definitely check out my cost of living video next, because in that video, I go in depth on cost of living in Ecuador for a month in different cities of Ecuador for different factors of living in Ecuador.